Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Outhouse Show. I am, of course, your host, Muttley. It's a beautiful, finally, Friday. At least it is where I am. Uh, I mean, I've got an amazing guest. Uh, you guys have probably seen him in a few different bands. That, you know, the small ones like Black Label and In This Moment, you know, those little bands like that. Uh, but, man, he's got uh, some solo stuff. He's got a solo album. He's got some great tunes that are out there. And I'm speaking of none other than Jeff Fab. Welcome to the show. All right. Thanks for having me, Motley. Ah, dude, it is my pleasure. And um, so tell us about what's going on, man. I knew you get the, the album, which came out uh, last November, right? Stealing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Stealing Souls yeah. record was uh, was uh, out November 30th. And uh, that was that went really well. I got some cool plays on that with uh, You're Complete and uh, the song Reaper and, and some other ones that people seem to dig. And um, shortly thereafter, I just kept on writing and then released um, Hell in the Hallway and then this next one that's coming out, See No Evil. Yeah, so you're, I mean, really busy. And I love the song, man. I love the, I love, I love the vibe of it. I love the sound of it. Cool. And I think when I first saw it, honestly, when I first saw it, like, okay, black label drummer in this moment, drummer, you know, that kind of thing. So, so my first... You know, your first impression before you hear anything is like, okay, I yeah. probably have a vibe of what this is going to be, but it wasn't. And that was a good thing. So, if cool, man. You know, yeah. I, I, yeah. A lot of people said the same. A lot of people said that too. They were, and they were like, wow, it was definitely not what we were expecting. It's cool, but it's cool. You know, we, we dig it. We dig it. And I was like, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And that's kind of the way, that's kind of the way it should be. So, what are you, gonna, I mean, what are you going to do with this? I mean, obviously, we're going to play the, the new song. It debuts, it debuts everywhere today, uh, the new one, See No Evil. Uh, what, what are your plans, man? I mean, you know, Zach's out doing Pantera, whenever long that's going to last. I know that he does, he's done some, st- uh, you know, other side stuff. But uh, yeah. what's, the, what's the plan with Jeff? What's happening with you? Well, when it was, as long as we're not working, I'm just going to keep working on my project, you know? And I guess I'm just going to go out and play some shows. I mean, this summer I was maybe planning on trying to get out and playing a few shows here and there. So that's the plan. As long as uh, the boss is out there doing some other things, I'm going to just I'm going to continue on doing um, doing this little thing. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's good. I mean, how long how long have you been with with Zach and the boys now? I am now the longest running drummer. I've been over 10 years. Wow, that is that has been there a while. Good. Yeah, in a band that's had a lot of drummers. I'm the <laughs> I am the, the longest running drummer. I, yeah, it's it's been great though, man. It's like it's crazy. We talk about it all the time in the band how time is flying. Like I can't even believe it's been over ten years. You know, dude. I mean, the older you get, and not to be cliche or get into that, but dude, the older you get, the faster it goes. And uh, I know it's crazy. It's true. And, and plus, if you look at it, like I, I had a you know I've had a thirty year rock radio career, and yeah. um, and it, I think I think back, I'm like thirty years. Holy crap. Yeah. It's just it's, know, it's crazy, and all the changes and everything that's happened in the in the industry and in the business. It's just crazy to me um, how things have come. Um, it's crazy, and then you also you also just you probably sit back and you're just grateful too, right? You're just like, wow, I've oh, been yeah, doing no, this. I'm, I'm totally... I've been doing what I love for thirty years, dude. You yeah, know, yeah, it's amazing. And I got out of the you know just a little inside of me because you know anybody just joined, of course, Jeff Fab got a new solo album out, Stealing Souls. Uh, we're gonna debut the new single here uh see no evil but you know drummer from in this moment and black label and all that but I, I look back on it and i and i walked away from it's like terrestrial radio and about three years ago somewhere around mm-hmm. in there and because it wasn't the same I, I wasn't having that kind of fun in the rock side of things and as we all know like rock's not dead so i don't i don't ever believe that will never believe that but it's a tough animal in terrestrial because of trying to get songs played but yeah. so moving over yeah. to the streaming and rock rage, I'm able to, you know, look, I'm able to talk to guys like you and, you know, bands that uh, in a lot of cases don't get recognized or played on a lot of yeah. your bigger commercial radio stations. And and so that that I really I really like the fact that I'm able to do that. So it gives me a much yeah. bigger freedom, you know. Yeah, and I think I think it's starting its own. And that being said, I believe like it's also that has started its own thing with the rock bands you know Mm -hmm. what i mean it almost started like this underground kind of thing and now again right after all these years and now it's with this radio it's bringing it all back again along with making the radio come back with it you know so i think it's i think the two things are working hand in hand i think it's i think it's uh 
Hopefully, at one time, we'll be back into the popular music. <laughs> All right, right. I mean, it, we've come. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. Like I said, I, I, I just, I think what it is is, uh, uh, what is that next big thing? I was watching something on YouTube the other night, yeah. and I don't know if there will be a, like a next big thing. You know, I know because of how stuff's been done. I mean, uh, but yeah, you know, but I certainly there's so much good music out there, and there's so many different places and ways to get it, and that kind of adds to it. But you know, so. yeah, I, I, it's, it's, when you, it's funny you brought that up because sometimes I, I talk about that too. Like, will there ever be another? Like, you know, remember when the grunge scene came out? Right. You know, and it was just like decimated so many bands for for a little while. You know what I mean? But I wonder, will that ever happen again? You know, like, will there? ever be something that comes out again that's just it's just you know everybody's looking back at some other things that have been happening and go oh i don't want this is lame you know i wonder i yeah i agree with that a hundred percent um i think about that all as a matter of fact i was just talking about that last night and i think one of the things that i saw as we kind of get off to that talking music which is what music guys do i guess um yeah was was one of the things that i saw was we went from like i'll be 56 this year so i'm, I'm getting to be an old dude <clears throat> and um you know you saw the the days where you had your Def leopard and then you had the crew and then you had guns and roses and then you know then nirvana and then it went from like the bands that really broke something you know they became like that to to a genre that yeah. broke something um yeah. was one of the things that i saw yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, that's a good way to put it, for sure. So yeah, I wonder if we'll ever see that again. But I, you know, you know what I think though? I think now with cell phones and everything, there's no really like dark corners for anything to start. Right. You know what I'm saying? To get brewing and percolating, you like there's because there's everything's in the light now. Everything is being filmed right away, or, and it's out there, and it's like I think that then that wasn't happening. So like all these little, you know, these little clicks were starting and like these you know the seattle scene was going off and you know and all this stuff was like you know was happening and i i just don't know if that could even be anymore because everything is like out on the internet right away you know so I yeah know. i agree i agree with 100 percent. It, it's 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 a tough it's a tough uh, map to navigate now, um, yeah. and it's it's hard because there is though, look there are some really unique bands out there. And if you follow oh, music, without a doubt. and it's without just that doubt. you're not you're really not ever going to get a chance to hear many of them anymore because you know, or at least they're not going to hit radio because of the YouTube. But now now things like YouTube have been very good for bands, so don't so it's not it's not like a bad thing. Um, it's just been a different thing. Um, right, because there's so much now, I believe. You right. know what I mean? It's like almost that there's so much, like even with like, um, you know, like, like I don't know how many uploads of music a day they said people are uploading, but it's like 100,000 songs a day or something like that. I mean, you know, we talk about like when we were growing up, I mean, waiting for albums to come out. You know what I'm saying? You'd buy one, you'd go home, you'd listen to the whole damn thing, look at the artwork, and then maybe think about going and getting another one, you know, at some point. Now it's like, oh, well, I can just, I'll go listen to this song. And then, you know, they're listening to like 10 seconds of that. And then you're like, ah, fuck, fuck this. Let me go listen to that. You know what I mean? It's like, it's crazy. Yeah. There's I, just I, I agree. so I think, much. I think that's one of the things I talk about. It. There's not, there's not that um, artist sort of loyalty to, to, to things. There's not that, um, you know, I, I love this band and I'm going to follow everything from this band and I'm going to listen to every album cut. Um, that That's kind of a thing that has gone to the wayside mm -hmm. that's yeah that's how i look at it you know what i mean Does yeah it make sense you know definitely makes sense it definitely makes sense and like as you were saying before though there is still tons of great bands and tons of great music it's just i think it's there's so much that sometimes it's getting lost in like the pool of of music <laughs> i guess right. you know what i mean right. it's just getting lost because there's just so much of it and people's attention spans now too have changed you know, with like flipping through videos and flipping through their TikToks and stuff like that. They're these, I mean, that they're just, this is what they're growing up with, right? So it's just all right. they know. So it's, it's not like it's wrong or, or anything. It's just, that's, it's basically times are a changing, you right. know? And, and, and that's basically it. You know? Well, that, and that, and that kind of leads into, you know, say, say a guy like you, he's got, you know, he's doing this thing and he's got this stuff coming out, you know, and, and, 
trying to find a place is that is that important to you now i mean is that does that matter i guess to you whether you're getting you know on all these radio stations or where the platform is now is it doesn't really matter oh it matters to me yeah right. because i mean i look like and i'm sure anybody that's you know a musician and an artist or whatever they want they want their stuff to be heard you know they want they want to inspire people they want to see what the people think if they like it so to me, it's like it's totally important. And it was and it was also a learning experience on my own because I'm doing everything on my own. You know, I'm doing the music. I'm doing the videos. I'm doing I'm, I'm washing the dishes. I'm taking the garbage out. You know what I mean? Like I'm doing all of it. So it was a whole learning experience, like with playlists and getting stuff on that and doing these things. So I had to learn all these different ways, you know, so. Which also made me think, like, it is such a cool time because you don't need a record label. Right. You know, You're you right. don't need – you can do this. You can do this. If you, have, if you have a good work ethic, you can do this, you know? So that is the bonus side to this, you know? There is – that, that, I believe, is a good thing. That's the positive thing. It's just the fact of, like, okay – now that everybody can do that, how are you going to stand out more than the other guy? Right. Like, you know, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, how is how is your song? How are you going to get your song heard over all these other songs? You know? Right. You so have to, figure to out me. Is, yeah. Yeah. So and then so to me, radio is everything, you know, right. radio is everything. And and it always will be. Oh, in yeah, my eyes. I don't, yeah, don't get me wrong. I mean, I never take anything away from a from a you know uh, something that gave me you know thirty years, <laughs> you know, yeah, and at least yeah. on the terrestrial side. And I mean, I'll never take away from that because it's that would be silly of me to do. Would make any sense? But um, yeah, it's just it's a way everyone has to navigate now. Is navigating is different. Um, yeah. Because there's all these there's all these platforms, right? right? And it's like all these different ways to do it for each platform. So it's like it's insane. I mean, it can overwhelm you, you know. Yeah, but if you it's, do it right, because we talk to bands a lot. I mean, I work for a little label, Curtain Call, just a little label, and you know we get bands and we get young bands, and and you know you talk to them and you're like, hey, there's all these other ways. You know, every band wants to go out a big tour, and we're like, well, that's fine, but I mean, it, it costs money, <laughs> and yeah. you know, if people don't know who you are and you haven't really done it. It just doesn't make sense. It's just, it's just, it's just how things have changed. That's all, and, and we could talk about that forever. But um, tell, tell everybody about about the the new song, Jeff, before we get too uh, far into. This all right, yeah. So, so where, basically, you know, people are like, oh gosh, <laughs> yeah. What are they even talking about? Right. <laughs> no, no, no. It's 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 cool. Basically, all we're saying is like the times have changed, and and you have to adapt, right? right. In a right. nutshell, that's it. Times have changed. You have to adapt. There's a lot of possibilities out there and go for it, you know, go for the possibilities and, and, and do it, you know, like you, and, and that's it. And that's all that would be said about it really right. about, about the bands and, and doing it. And, and as far as my, these songs, that was the same thing for me. I was like, all right, I have to learn how to do this stuff. All right, cool. I'm going to learn. Right. So thank God we got YouTube and we have all these things because I can learn how to do the plumbing. I can learn how to make a pizza. I can do whatever I want with YouTube. Right. So <laughs> it was the same thing with learning about playlists and learning about all these different apps to make these videos because I'm making my own videos and stuff. So, you know, everything we're talking about is positive. It's just that it's a change, you right. know. Right. Um, but, yeah, with these new songs that I, I did the Stealing Souls record. Basically, I played everything on that myself, except I had Dario from Black Label play a solo on a tune called Rebellion Dogs. And then I had my buddy uh, Brian Green, who I grew up with, play, some, play a little guitar on You're Complete, I think it, he played on, and, and maybe another one. Uh, but I did everything. I played the keys. I did all that. We, I released that one, and it was cool. It got, you know, You're Complete got played on the radio, and it was really cool. It was really a fun time. So I just kept on writing because I still had time off. And uh, I was in a band called In This Moment, which you brought up. And uh, Blake Benzel, who was the other guitar player in the band at the time, is still a good friend of mine. And he is a engineer slash producer guitar player. So I was like, hey, Blake, I'm going to send you this song and uh, tell me what you think. And he ended up like doing his thing. And that became Hell in the Hallway. So I was like, oh, that sounds really cool, man. Let's I'm going to release this. He was like, yeah, I was like, yeah. let's." And then I was like, you want to just keep writing some songs and he was like totally so that's where these songs in now are coming out of they're coming out of blake and i i'm basically playing everything like i did on stealing souls 
I send it to him. He'll replay my guitar part and then add his his magic on top of that. And that's basically what's going on. So Hell in the Hallway is he and I, and then See, See No Evil is he and I, and then the next couple of singles that are going to come out are going to be he and I. So um, that's basically where I'm at now. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm actually looking forward to the whole album. I haven't, you know, I, 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 when, when is that actually going to be released? Uh, I don't really have an exact date, but I'm right. thinking before Black Label starts up again. So we got the Berserkus Fest, in, uh, which is Black Label's festival, in uh, September. So I figured before that, you know, before that, I would like to have the record done and out for everybody to listen to. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I mean, the, uh, that being said, what, what is going on in that camp? Well, that, I don't want to get too deep into it because we're here talking about your solo stuff. And I, I, I like no, to try to keep good. it there, yeah. you know. Oh, it's all good. So as far as, you know, as far as Black Label, I mean, yeah, I mean, is he, I don't want to get into the Pantera conversation, but I'm assuming Zach's going to be doing some, you know, of his stuff for the Black Label and all of that here. You, you were talking about getting ready to, to, to do their little, to do the festival. What what plans yeah. do you guys have beyond that? Well, well, right now we're, we're finishing up this record and mm-hmm. I believe, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that it's coming out the beginning of 2025 i'm pretty sure i mean and let, don't quote me on that but right. i'm pretty sure it should be you know so um you know and then i as far as i know we're gonna be you know we'll be firing it up and touring you know so um that's that's the plan you know so and i think it's kind of starts around the berserkus fest was when we play and then and then you know the new year will be right around the corner from there so i'm feeling like you know that's september is probably that's why i said i'd like to maybe release my record you know, before in the summer, maybe sometime, maybe in August or something or July. And then, um, be, and then, so I have, you know, so it's done and then I can go out and work, right? you know, with the, with the fellas. So, um, yeah, but I mean, black label is, is, uh, you know, we've been down for a minute, but we did tour pretty hardcore before that we did about two years or whatever it was on doom crew. So on the album, doom crew, uh, right. we toured a bunch and then we finished with the anthrax tour and that was, that was a pretty lanky tour. So, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we, you know, we put it down for a while to give everybody a little break and then we're going to come back out, you awesome. know, and I, yeah, and hopefully, sh- hopefully everybody remembers us and comes to the show. <laughs> I'm sure they will. I mean, look, the, 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 the black label fans are a pretty hardcore bunch, so I, yeah. I don't have any doubt that they're not going to, you They know. really are the best, man. Yeah. They're the best and they, they support me too. And all the, and like they support what JD and what he does and Dario. And they're always just so supportive to all of us on our little side uh, gigs and stuff. They're always reposting all of our stuff, and they really are just the best, man. Yeah, that's awesome. I know we talked a little bit about this. What you know, I I I'd love for you know anybody just listening. Of course, I want to reiterate uh, Jeff Fab, uh, BLS drummer. Uh, of course, you know played it in this moment. I uh, got a new solo album uh, which is out called Stealing Souls. We're going to debut the brand new song, See No Evil. Um, what what kind of just without going at what kind of advice you give like young bands? Because I talk to a lot of them all the time. But what what's a guy like you say in today's environment? What what do you? I know you kind of touched on it just a little bit. What kind of advice do you think you would give guys today? You know, guys in a band. Well, first I would tell them to just fu- do what you love. If this is something that you want to do, you know, some people are probably not going to think it's maybe the best idea, but you kind of just got to do what you want to do in your life, you know. And if you really hustle. You know, and like what we were talking about before, times have changed. Mm. And now we have a lot of these possibilities now where you don't really need to wait for anybody. You can get your songs on playlists. You can record yourself in your home studio. There's like it's insane. You know what I mean? So if you have a work ethic, if you have a really like just solid work ethic, you can do it. You know, you don't have to be the best musician in the world. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to just have a great work ethic and you got to be able to write a decent song. You know what I mean? So I would say, I would say like whatever you do, just treat it like a job every day. What am I, ask yourself, what am I doing right now that is furthering something that I love, like, like the music? Am I doing, am I You got to ask yourself that question. You got to be honest with yourself. Am I doing everything I can do right now to help my career? And and just ask yourself that question. And and if you're not, then just get cracking. You know, because there's no there's no excuse now, right? Like like Motley, there's no excuse. You got you can you can get your own songs onto Spotify, right? Mm -hmm. You got all this social media. 
you can do all of this. You know, you just got to hustle and you got to you got to investigate. And the sky's the limit, man. And then you got to get out there and play, too. Right. Uh You got to get out there because really the bottom line, too, is you got to get out there and sell the T-shirts. Right. Oh, yeah. Like you got to get out there and you got to sell your shirt, you know, sell your shirts. So but you got to do like you. But to get started, you don't really need to, you know, like you can be a one man band at first if you need to. Right. You don't have to wait for your friend that that's flaking out. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all Are know you, about really? that. Really? Seriously? Uh, you know, you know what I'm saying, buddy, through the years. When you're starting. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, anybody relates to that. So if right. everybody's flaking out on you. Guess what? Do it yourself and do whatever you can do yourself until you find the guys to play your songs that you write. You know, I mean, yeah. just there's no excuse. Just go for it. Yeah, and that's it, all I can. That's all I can say. Yeah, to these kids. and and yeah, just a, yeah, just because you're right. I mean, as much as I will sometimes get like how social media and you know some of these other avenues have kind of diluted the waters when it comes to rock. It, on the other side of that, you're right. If you're a young band and you see these all the time, you see these bands uh, that that you know get these just crazy views, and they haven't had one song played anywhere except for say YouTube, which is really. Uh, of all the of all the social media stuff out there, it's interesting how YouTube has remained this such a strong entity for artists. But that being said, you have to know how to play. You know, you got yes. you got to put some some time and effort, like you said. You got to put the time yeah. and effort into it. I mean, you kind of get it's like the old cliche: you get back what you put in. And yes, you know, if you're willing to do that, yeah, you're right. I mean, you can you can become the next big thing. I'm trying to remember the guy that was just I, my, it just escapes me, but he had uh, he a country singer. Um, Jelly Roll, not no, well, not Jelly Roll, which who's a, is an amazing guy. I love Jelly Roll to death. Yeah, but yeah. He, he was the um, he had that catchy song. He was basically shot at himself. Why is it my mind went blank? Um, oh, oh yeah, the kid, the guy, the guy that was up in the in the. Uh, that's right, I forgot his name. Yeah, it was the beard. Just, and he, and, yeah, yeah, and he he you know he, you know as that happens you know your lightning strikes. But there's a, a great example of how yep. you can create something and write a great song and find something catchy. And, and I don't know, I guess he signed some crazy deal now, but, and he held out, but there's a guy who became famous without, without any of that Tom McDonald. There's another guy. So, I mean, if you work totally. hard enough, you know, yeah, you're right. It's and that's totally. And, that's, you know. and it's like, yeah, you got to just, and, and it's like you said, now you don't have to like, I moved to LA in 98, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm from a small town on, on Long Island. And there wasn't, you know, there was only a handful of musicians, you know, and I wanted to play with other musicians. You know, I wanted to do this and I just I wanted to be around this, that, that the, the like minded people as far mm-hmm. as they wanted to do that for a career. So I moved, right. you know, and I moved I moved to California to, to play with people. And now you don't have to do that. Right. <laughs> No, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You don't we're, really have to do that anymore. Uh-huh. You know, well, and anybody that wasn't, you're right, because really, like COVID, as horrible as that time was, it, it really opened up those doors for bands to be like, uh, it, it, you know, it was always there, available, and some bands obviously did that, but. As a whole, you're like, hey, I don't, I don't have to have Jim come over to the house, and you know, I can get Jeff's drum tracks. He can just, you know, and it, 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 it created something that wasn't as big, I guess, for lack of a better way. I mean, yes. there's always been that, hey, I'll do these drum tracks and I'm going to send them there. And, you know, there's always been that. But it certainly opened up that avenue of saying, you know, how 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 that really changed things for a positive. It really did. Absolutely. And that's how that's how I've done. I've done all of my songs. I've, I've sent them right to like even uh, Stealing Souls. I had Adam Fuller that mixes uh, Black Label. Mm-hmm. Uh, he worked at Sound City for years. Uh, great engineer. Uh, producer he he actually he did me a deal he was like oh dude he, we're friends so he was i sent him my tracks you know and he ran them through his gear at his studio mixed everything and sent it back to me <laughs> it's just like yeah. it's amazing you know <laughs> and then the same thing with blake i send him my uh, i'll write the songs and then i send him i send him the session you know in his zip drive right E- email it to him on, i mean send it to him on, a, on through dropbox and that's how we do it back and forth yeah, that's and the, it's just like 
it's the way of the world now. That's just and that's yeah. the easiest way to do it. But it's cost effective too. But hey, Jeff, it, before, it really is. before we wrap this up and we and we spotlight and, and debut this uh, the new song "See No Evil," one of the things I'd like to ask guys, okay, and and it's because it it, it kind of takes us all back. So before you know, before you're a professional musician and you know you were you know on the road and doing all these things, we all have a story. <clears throat> what yeah. what? What concert, what show did you go to that really sort of made that spark click? That that where you're like, that's what I want to do. Pre, you know, pre all the all the, you know, I I'm in a band now, I got a label, I'm 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 on the road, you know, when you were just the the kid going to shows. What okay. was that show? I'm going to tell you right now. It was actually the my high school, Mattituck High School variety show, okay? And I was in fifth grade. I was in fourth grade, maybe. And this was all the high school kids. And I and I'd go to the sh- I would go see the variety shows, and they and at the end they would have the the high school like rock bands play, and that was it for me, man. Like I remember seeing like like those high school kids and their kits. I mean, this was the eighties, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so the, it was just I would go early and I would just sit and look at the gear, and I was just in awe of the whole thing, man. And it was just that was I. It was just it called me so hard. I just I I wanted to be a part of that, and that was it. It wasn't even some major concert. It was it was those concerts for me. That's awesome. That's a great story. Yeah. And that's why I like to bring those trigger those stories because you get so many different uh, answers to that. And a lot of guys are like, well, you know, I went to see Genesis with my parents, and you know, so it's a, and it harkens us back. It makes us stop for a minute and think, oh yeah, I remember that. It's a great memory. Those are great memories to bring up for me. Uh, you know, obviously never played instruments or never was a musician per se, but, you know, I kind of got that bug that I wanted to be a part of music was my dad took me to the uh, Bark at the Moon, Shout at the Devil tour. Oh, wow. And nice. so, and, and I, you know, I'd been into music and stuff before, so it wasn't like that. You know, my dad, who was he wasn't a hippie, but I was listening to Sabbath and Moody Blues and all that stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. and it was growing up. But that was like, I saw that and, the, and, and everything wow. that was going on with it. And I'm like, Somehow, some way, you know, I think it clicked subconsciously. I need to be there. And then, of course, all the years later, I, you know, end up doing radio. But that that was it for me. And um, so that that was my that was my little uh, story when it comes to that. And uh, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty great concert to see, man. Yeah, for your was, first concert. Yeah, wow. Great. And the the, the upside that's... to that. And my dad, I've taken him to some Ozfest, you know, and, and stuff like that because he's still. I mean, he listens to Rammstein when he works out, and you know he's he'll be seventy six this year. That's awesome. And that's yeah. I mean, like I came to one day, and he's like, "So what's going on with Five Figure Death Punch? I heard about this, and you just out of the blue, which is very cool. And you would see my dad, you would never guess it that way. Um, so cool. He's but, a metler. Yeah, exactly. And so you know, it's very cool, and that's a great you know, those are great stories. But what came out of that, which was really cool, this remember I prefaced that, was after that show. My dad, we were on our way home. He, it was a surprise. Uh, he, it was a surprise show. I didn't know that's where he was taking me. So that that made it even better. But after the show, he's like, he looked at me. He's like, Chris, you can like, you can do these on your own now. That was a bit much for me because <laughs> we were really close. <laughs> so there was it was a bonus. You know what I mean? I went to this amazing show, and then I, every other concert after that. I didn't have to go with my dad. <laughs> so. And then he gave you the blessing. He, he was like, you can go on your own. You're all, it's good. I don't, you know, I don't need this. But anyway, um, that's so, awesome. Jeff, man, it's, it's been a great conversation. Uh, we got to do this again. I uh, look forward to yes. seeing you on the road in whatever capacity you're at, whether you're out doing some solo stuff or you're back out with black label. Um, yeah, man. And, and set this up, man. Let us know a little bit about the song that I'm going to throw on this, this debut, see no evil. Cool. So see no evil is kind of like uh, when you're feeling stuck in the mud, you feel like everybody's passing you by. Right. And, and it's kind of like the story of the tortoise and the hare. And basically it's sometimes slow and steady wins the race. And so that's what that song is about. So it's about persevering and just, you know, just staying, staying steady through the hard times and going forward no matter what. And just just at your pace if you have to. 
That's and just, awesome. And just believe it, believe it in yourself. Well, That's here it what is. It's about. Here it is, man. Uh, Jeff, again, thanks for joining me on the show. Jeff Fab, be sure and check him out on all the uh, Instagram, Spotify, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, all those places. Uh, new release in stores. Go out and buy it. It's called Stealing Souls. This is See No Evil in the Outhouse right here on Rock Rage Radio. <laughs> 